Hey everybody, Suze here back with another keto cooking video. Today we're going to be making a new to us keto recipe using ground chicken. It is a keto cordon bleu meatball recipe and we just served it over a little steamed zucchini. If you are new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of our weekly keto cooking videos and let's go ahead and get into it. I wanna catch the way. So first up, this recipe is based on one by allrecipes.com. Of course, I'll link the original recipe down below. They call for using six ounces of cubed ham, and we, we have the seven ounce thing of smoked uncured ham steak. This is boar side, which we got on sale. I, this brand is more expensive, but it's tasty. I always like looking for uncured, just I find it has less carbs in it. So we are aiming to yield 20 meatballs out of this recipe. So I'm just going to slice this accordingly to get 20 nice sized cubes of ham. Um, you could save even more time and buy pre-cubed ham, but I found that this worked perfectly and we'll just have some left over. So once I have this all diced kind of consistently, I'm going through and just picking out the 20 best pieces. And you do want each of your cubes to be kind of sizable because we're going to shape our ground chicken around that. So it's just sticking that into a little dish and then I have a little bit left over here that I can just pan fry and serve for my toddlers for, for their meal. Coming over to a large mixing bowl, I'm adding one pound of ground chicken along with a third of a cup of almond flour. Now I love using Costco's almond flour. It's blanched, it's fine, it's awesome. I'm adding in a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, as well as a half a teaspoon of onion powder. This really gives it great flavor. And then I'm also gonna add in one egg that's just slightly beaten. And now for the really messy part, I know a lot of you are gonna cringe that I'm doing this with bare hands, but I would be touching it with my hands anyway, but you can wear gloves if you prefer. I find the consistency of ground chicken is so mushy that you really could mix this with a spoon if you like, but this is how I do it. That's what soap and water for, just mixing this all up until you've got a nice consistency and everything is well combined. And washing my hands, getting straight over here. I've got a little plate stuck to the side to put our completed raw meatballs on and our ham. And we're just gonna grab between a half a tablespoon to a full tablespoon of the chicken mix Again, we're going for 20 of these keto chicken meatballs. So just kind of eyeball it and do what you like. But if you have those little handy dandy scoopers, you're looking probably for between a half tablespoon to a tablespoon in each. And just placing a piece of ham in the middle of our little chicken ball and then pinching and squeezing until we form that around there. And the first one I did was a lot bigger than the other ones as I was kind of getting my chicken to ham ratio down but we're just gonna repeat this process with all of it. Again, aiming for 20 of these chicken meatballs. And this is a really cool recipe to just kind of change things up. Of course, forming the meatballs is the most troublesome part of the recipe, but I found that it was still a quick enough process and it was a nice change from just your regular keto chicken recipes. All right. And we did manage to eke out 20 of these chicken meatballs. And now we're just gonna stick these to the side. I'm grabbing an electric skillet. Thank you again, daddy, for buying me this awesome electric skillet. It's super huge and it's dishwasher safe and it's nonstick and I love it so much. But if you're working on the stovetop, you're gonna be working over medium high heat to start cooking our meatballs and to your pan or skillet, you're adding just a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Once mine's heated, I'm just using a spatula here to spread this out. I think my kitchen is crooked, <laughs> so I always end up spreading things evenly in my pan. Once that's to temperature and on my electric skillet, I'm working anywhere between 325 and 350 for medium high heat. Um, for me, I think that was about like 335. And what I love about this extra large skillet is I can fit everything in the pan at one time. It is seriously my favorite kitchen appliance other than just a regular crock pot. It's the kitchen appliance I didn't really know that I needed until I had it. I didn't even know they made them this big. I love it because you can just cook everything for your family at one time. So after I get all of these um, in our pan. I'm just cooking them on this side for about three minutes, undisturbed. It's just gonna get a little nice brown crust on one side of our meatballs, as you can see here. And then I'm just flipping those, kind of rolling them over. I do like to use a spatula or spoon to roll these. I find if you use tongs um, that the chicken is just too soft and it will 
mush your meatballs down. And once we get them all rolled over to the other side, I'm also gonna cook them on that side for three to four minutes, but just keep an eye on it. I do like to get that nice brown crust on them, but I just, you don't wanna burn them. And we're not aiming to cook these all the way through right now as we'll be bringing them back to our pan later. So once they cook for three to four minutes on the other side, I'm going ahead and cutting my heat down to medium. And that's just gonna give it time to go ahead and cool down a little bit to make our sauce. And I'm just tossing these around there a little before I remove them to a clean separate bowl. And now to get started on our sauce, we're adding in one tablespoon of butter. And then I'm just using my spatula to scrape up all of those tasty little brown bits off of our skillet. And once our butter is nice and melted, I'm adding in three fourths a cup of chicken broth. And I always like to use low sodium broth because it gives me more control over the recipe, but you do you and what you prefer. Bringing that up to a nice bubbling simmer adding in one teaspoon of just regular Dijon mustard. And we're just gonna whisk that in there until it's all the same consistency. And we're just letting this simmer about a minute. I apologize for all of the steam coming up right now. After that is simmered just a little bit, we're adding in a half a cup of heavy cream and whisking that in as well. And I'm just gonna whisk this until everything is mixed together nicely and it starts to bubble slightly. And then I'm adding in one cup of a shredded Swiss Gruyere blend. And I know Gruyere is a type of Swiss cheese, but it tends to melt uh, a little bit easier. And I am using pre-shredded cheese because it is cheaper that way and it melts really nicely here like a fondue cheese and what we're going to get from this is going to be more like a fondue kind of cheese sauce rather than a saucy sauce like liquidy sauce if that makes any sense but we're just whisking that together until it is all melted evenly and then we're going to add our chicken cordon bleu meatballs back to our skillets and then i will come back and thin this out a little bit so that i do get a little bit of a saucier sauce consistency from it but just plopping those back in and i'm just going to use my spoon to make sure that all of our chicken meatballs are nice and coated in our cheese sauce that's the most important thing to me if you've been here for a while you know i'm a huge fan of cheese and this part looks very very messy <laughs> but i assure you they were very very tasty so after i had those all coated i am going back and adding i'd say a fourth of a cup of chicken broth to this and mixing those around to kind of thin out our sauce a little because i just wanted enough to kind of go around per serving you could add some additional cream as well just play around with it the most important part for me was that my chicken meatballs were fully coated in the cheese sauce and then the rest was whatever if you're serving it over cauliflower rice or something i don't think the extra cheese sauce is as important but for me i opted to serve this over steamed zoodles steamed zucchini and so i did want a little extra saucy sauce so while I was finishing this up, I just have uh, a steam bag of zoodles. I never spiralize my own zucchini. I always buy it frozen and just put them in the microwave because I'm all about easy. Here it is plated up. I did top it with a little bit of dried parsley. The original recipe linked down below does call for using a little bit of fresh parsley in it. And you can take a look at their recipe if you like and do it the way that they do. This is an absolutely delicious recipe. I was really shocked at how much I enjoyed these. I've never never really been a big fan of regular chicken cordon bleu. It's always just been too mustardy to me, but just making this with that little bit of Dijon mustard in the sauce, it was just the right balance of mustard to cheese for me. And I really, really enjoyed this. While I was cooking this, I was thinking you could even simplify this further and make like a chicken cordon bleu kind of meatloaf recipe instead of the meatballs. So I think I might work on my own recipe for that, but everything will be linked down below. I'll try to put the skillet link down below as well. And I hope you enjoyed this week's keto cooking video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, share this with any of your friends that are following a keto diet and living that low-carb lifestyle as we do. And until next time, bye y'all.